This is gonna be a recipe that you could use in pretty much any type of bread. It will make it somehow or another. But let's just start off with a really, really simple tin loaf. So for this, we're gonna use a tin like this, um, which has got little holes through the sides of it. It's a two pound or a one kilo tin. Um, you don't need to get ones with uh, little holes in. It's absolutely fine with that. And I'll show you what to do with the tin when we come to it. Um, first of all, we're just gonna use some white flour. I've got 580 grams of good bread flour. It's uh, really important that you use good quality flour. Uh, this is from a baker's mill. Um, it, it's, it's Canadian flour, it, this, is, this is lovely. So 580 grams go in there. Next up, I'm gonna get some yeast. We're gonna use 12.76. 12.76 grams of yeast. Look, if you don't have scales that are, that are that accurate, then you just have to make do. In fact, these only go down to one decimal place, so I'll be doing 12.8. Um, but yeah, just try and do it as accurate as you can. If you can get to 12 in a little bit, then that's fine. If you go to uh, 13, take a little bit away. That's all you need to worry about. So, the yeast can go straight in there. Same with dried yeast, by the way. You don't need to activate it in warm water. That's actually quite bad. Um, you may want to dissolve it in, in the cold water if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, it will break down. So, uh, next up, we're gonna add some salt. So, for this, 11.6 grams. Now, it's really, really crucial, just like I was saying about the yeast, with the dried yeast adding another chemical, is that that's why I use um, sea salt or rock salt. You can and you probably should uh, weigh it separately and then add the salt in afterwards, but I've already put it in, so we're just gonna go with it and just try and be as careful as possible. So this is just cold water. Um, I've actually put this jug of tap water in the fridge overnight and that's just brought the temperature down. I had my temperature reading in it. It was about seven degrees. Um, it's really, really important that you use cold water. If you see a recipe, that, <laughs> this is my rule, if you see a recipe that uses tepid or warm water, just close it down and move on to another one because they are bad recipes. They, you want cool temperatures to develop dough. It will develop perfectly without it. Unless you're gonna put it, the dough into a prover um, to keep it, keep that temperature warm, then it, it, it shouldn't be used. So, uh, 388 grams of water. Now, for this, I'm just gonna give them a little whisk. That's all of our ingredients, by the way. It's all we need, flour, salt, water, and yeast. And yeah, you can see the salt is now dissolved. Um, I've got a dough scraper here. This is a really, really cool tool. They cost like under a pound, so they're really worth getting. Now we're gonna add the flour to the water. And the reason for this is it's got the salt in. We don't wanna leave residue of salt in uh, the bowl. We're gonna try and have our mix to be exactly what we actually want it to be. Otherwise it becomes inconsistent, okay? So uh, using our dough scraper, it's a really, really fluid action to start with. So all we're gonna do is go around the outside of the bowl with this hand, and the other hand is gonna move the bowl around. Okay, so like this, and tuck it in. Now, if you don't have one of these, uh, and you wanna get cracking anyway, then that's absolutely fine. Use what's called the uh, pincer method. So you're gonna grab your hands into a claw like that, and then you're gonna just use your hands to do exactly the same thing. And just give it that little turn at the end. All we're doing here is combining the ingredients. We're not doing any kneading or stretching out or anything like that. We're just gonna try and clear the outside of the bowl so the dough forms one mass. Now, when we get to the point like this, where the dough is not really gonna move much more in the bowl, then we're gonna take it out onto the table, and we're just gonna give this a light little mix with our hands. And how we do this, is we take our right hand, uh, and then we push the, the dough away, and pull it back. Push it away, pull it back, and the left hand can give it a little turn and form it into a ball.
and we're just going to get to the point which should take about a minute maybe less where you can't feel much dry flour in this mix at all okay that's it really didn't take long. Now we're going to get a bowl and we're going to try and scrape up as much of our dough off the table which of course was nice and clean before we started. And this dough now can just sit in the fridge with a plastic bag on top for about 10 to 20 minutes and that is going to basically do the work for us. We could continue the slow kneading process if we wanted to and that would take 10 minutes or so um, but actually this is going to shorten or half the amount of time so we're going to do some more slow kneading so don't worry you're not going to miss the method but we're just going to pop it in the fridge and this will speed up the process will make it easier for us to knead it. So with the dough now we've got this uh, stretch now where it's nice and stringy look at that yeah it's fairly soft it's got kind of a light sort of crust sort of thing forming on the top so you can tell that there's some and it feels lighter um, kind of texture so you can feel the yeast is now becoming active. We'll see it's now down to 22 degrees so we want to act quick with this. So let's take this straight onto the table and I will show you the best way to knead bread. So we've already done our slow mixing process which was kind of just pushing it together and uh, combining it. Now we're going to crack onto the fast technique. So for this, we kind of have to build up to it for the first few goes. But basically we're going to stretch it out like that and throw it on the table. And we're going to just repeat this process. And so the more we stretch it, the more we're going to get that surface area onto the dough, the more less energy we're going to have to use because we won't have to do it as much, and the more impact we're going to have in actually smashing the protein down and breaking it into gluten. Um, we're also going to knock air into it by giving it that bang. Um, so it really, this technique really, really works. So we do 10 and we try and stretch it out as far as we can. Sometimes the dough is a little bit kind of strong, it's a little bit elastic and it's harder at first. The more we need it, the less elastic it will become because... Okay, so after our eight minutes of kneading, um, we can start seeing that our dough has got a lot of strength now. If you try and pull it, it's got this strength. Um, you may have heard of something called the window pane if you've done any baking before or watched any baking videos. Now that is when we stretch it like this and it becomes so thin it's like a window pane. Now we're not quite there yet and it is quite hard to um, get to that point. To get to that point you, by hand uh, you'd probably be better off putting it back in the fridge again for another 15 minutes and then kneading it again. We don't need to be at that stage for this bread. We're actually going to use um, some now further fermentation time to keep developing the dough. Um, so we're going to now leave it covered in the fridge. If it's under 20 degrees, then by all means keep it out. Um, but if it's under, if it's above that, this is 25, 25.6. So we're going to put it in the fridge to try and cool it down a little bit. So we're going to leave it for an hour. Either way, you do it for an hour, either in the fridge or out the fridge. So we're going to leave it for an hour in the fridge, covered just like it was before, um, and then we're going to come back to it and we're going to do what's called stretch and fold. Okay, so it's been in for an hour in the fridge. So next up, we're going to do what's called a stretch and fold. So let's just take it out. And you see the dough has risen a little bit. Um, wouldn't say it's doubled in size. Let's just do it with a light flour dusting to start with. So, using our scraper, we're just going to turn the dough out, hopefully all in one ball. Okay? Next up, we're going to take our dough piece and just stretch it a good amount and fold it back into the middle like that. Okay? Then we're going to take out the side, do the same. Then we're going to turn it again and do that side, and then we're going to turn it again and do the final 
four sides. So now every side has had a stretch and that side as well. Okay, then we've got a dough piece like that. It looks a bit ugly. Um, we're just gonna finish it off by just taking our hands and just folding it over like that and then like that again into kind of this oblong shape. If you want, just try and cushion it around like that and make a little ball out of it. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just, all we're doing here is giving, is moving it all around so that the outside temperature is the same as the inner core temperature and that there's enough that you're making sure that the density and then the amount of um, starches um, and that are, are distributed evenly um, and doing that creates tension in the dough which makes the dough stronger. So back into the bowl we go and now we're going to put it back in the fridge for another hour going to now shape this bread. Okay, so we're going to take our piece of dough. Um, you could add a bit of flour onto the table if you want to. Um, let's do that. Just a little bit, just a little bit. The dough should be fairly strong if it's kneaded correctly um, and it shouldn't need that extra bit of dough. So we're going to turn it upside down like that. Okay, um, and then we're just going to push it out into kind of a, a rectangle which is you know, the shape of the, the tin. Okay. It's never gonna be perfect, so you know, that, that's fine, as long as it's not sticking to the bottom. Pull this bit towards us, like that, and tuck it right in there, like that. Okay, then we do it again. If we want a bit of flour. Okay, on the side. Push the sides together stretch out and push, fold them in, and that will give us that neat edge at the side. Now we're just going to try and make sure this is kind of even, so if you might need a poke there, just to make sure that you're not get a big lump in the middle. It's easier to get rid of it now than it is later. This is going to be easier to stretch out at the end. The ends aren't too much of a problem, it's that middle bit there, you want it nice and even. Then again, fold that in there and try and get that action as you push in. Then again, then again, and then at the bottom, I'm just gonna seal it a little bit like that. And that's it. You could opt to just give the edges a little turn, like that. We take our bread tin, we've got the seam, which is there at the bottom, and then it goes like that. Okay, so I've really, that's the hardest bit, really. Um, we're now gonna leave this to prove. Uh, depending on the temperature of the room, the dough, um, and the humidity, the type of flour you've got, you're looking at about an hour and a half to up to three hours. But I just want to explain that we added flour here. Now, the flour does in some side senses uh, create a barrier, but actually when you get better and more confident with handling the dough, it's actually better to, need, uh, to shape the bread without the flour. Um, and that means that the bread, the dough hasn't got these kind of barriers between it and actually it can really tuck in and stick together creating more tension and more strength in the bread. Um, so what I would say is maybe try this a few times. So um, this is now gonna prove um, just openly in the air. What you can do is put a bag over it, you know, kind of like that. And that'll kind of slow down um, any moisture hitting the, releasing from the top and it drying out. Okay, so it's been uh, about an hour and a half to two hours um, and, and it's risen up beautifully. Um, so to tell that it's risen, you can do a few things. Uh, one is you can do the touch test. So if I push that down, it should stay pretty much down. There should be an indent left after two to three seconds. Um, you will get a little bit of bounce. This is slightly, ever so slightly underproved, which is actually what we want, because if it's slightly underproved, you're gonna get a little bit of lift in the oven. Um, the weight, and you'll, you'll get like a rip, so we're gonna cut it and, the, and it will rip, it will spring up and tear that rip into a nice, nice, um, nice little crust going on there. So yeah, this is perfect for what we want. You'll also notice that the edge of the tins, if you weighed your dough correctly, um, which is 950 grams, 960 grams roughly, um, per loaf tin, then you're gonna get a nice edge. So where the dough is now meeting the top 
of the tin. That is perfect, that is bang on what we want to look for. So where that dough is now touching, it's come up to the side there, that means that it's ready, it's full, filled up the tin. That's perfect. So we're gonna cut this now. Now we're just gonna use a serrated knife because you can do it with a serrated knife. Um, you may also wanna try the first few times to just cut it, um, drizzle a bit of flour on top because that can act as a bit of a, an easier way to cut it. Um, but you don't have to. Um, with this, we're just gonna take one cut along the middle, but slightly to this side. Um, the camera's making it look worse than it is. Here it is. So we're gonna go slightly to this side, um, not so much, and we're gonna cut at a slight angle like that, okay? We don't need to cut right at the tops, right at the ends. We're gonna just try and cut from about there downwards. Now it's not gonna happen, we will cut a bit of the edge, but you'll see what I mean. Um, so we're gonna take our knife right over here and cut right in like that. How does that look? Cool. Now, ideally you wanna do it in one hit, but if you do need to go over it again, then by all means go over it again to get that little bit of a deeper cut. Now, what's really important here is we get this straight. Now, what's really important here is we get this straight to the oven so that it doesn't start collapsing as we've just cut it. Okay, so our oven is preheated. It's currently at 250 which is great. We haven't got the most powerful oven in the world, so we won't try and get as hot as it possibly can. The stone in there is baking hot, so that is nicely warm. It's been warmed up for about two hours. Now, the tray at the bottom is nice and hot again. We shut that door there, get that in. So, all we've done there is, so all we've done there is added water to that bottom tray and that's going to create steam in the oven and if you can see your um, the bread in there it is now glistening it's got a little sheen on it that's just what we want because that means that the steam has done its job the steam will work on top okay so the steam will coat the top of the dough as it goes into the oven and that will allow the oven spring to happen. So what it does, it keeps it moist, it stops it gelatizing, and that means that it can actually go straight up. If we didn't add steam, which is a case when we're doing something like soft rolls, um, or maybe something with a lot of fat in it anyway, so it doesn't need it. Um, if we didn't add steam, it would stop the oven spring, which would keep the crust uh, lower, um, which actually will create it more dense, which can be quite nice if you're wanting to do something soft with a soft crumb. But as we're making um, bread here, we want it to spring up and be light and airy um, as much as possible. So that's why we add um, oven, uh, so that's why we add steam to the oven. You can do it in other ways. You could add um, a spray of water, and I do do that in other videos as well. So check that, check this out as we progress. Um, using hot water does work better. Um, and straight out the kettle because it doesn't cool the oven down and that's one of the things that I've learned over the past few months is that when you're baking at home it's, you don't have that power from the oven that maybe you could use cold water in a commercial bakery oven because it didn't really affect it that much it had enough power to just raise the temperature straight back up but when you're baking at home you have to do everything you can to try and preserve that heat in the oven so the temperature now in the oven would have dropped a little bit with the door opening and things like that. So we're going to make that down to 230. We always use the um, bottom heat um, and generally for bread we'll always just use the bottom heat as well. But if it's dropped down to say 200 or 190 or something like that, I may also add a bit of top heat just to get the temperature going in the oven again because the bread really likes a really warm oven. Um, the downside is it will start colouring at the top a bit earlier than maybe we want to. So it's always a bit of a, um, a bit of a challenge and you've got to have a be a bit bold and just make a decision like to do it for maybe two, three minutes to get that temperature off and then turn it off again, which is kind of what I tend to do. But then of course there is that slight trade-off. The best way is to just get that oven door shut as soon as possible like we did there. So this is now going to bake in the oven for um, around 30 minutes at 230. Then we'll then check it and hopefully at this point 
we'll start seeing a good colorization at the top um, and we'll be able to get another 10 minutes out of it without it burning and that's the kind of what we're aiming for if we get it in there for 40 minutes 35 to 40 minutes um, then it's gonna the dough will be at the right temperature in the middle so you have a nice crumb um, if it's longer than that then it starts drying out um, and if it's shorter than that, it can be a little bit soft and sometimes underbaked, especially the bottom of the bread where it doesn't want to come out of the tin because it's still too soft. So we'll check it at 30 minutes and we'll make a decision about what we're going to do next at that point. Okay, so after half an hour, let's have a look at this bread here. So we've got a nice colour, orange colour, that's looking good. I'm going to give it a quick flip round because uh, the oven cooks them a bit unevenly. That's looking fine, that is. So we'll keep that in there for another five minutes and then we'll have a look at it then and probably take it out of the tin um, and just check that the bottom of it's baked because we might need to then put it back in for another five minutes. So five minutes for now and then we'll have a look at it. Okay, so we're gonna attempt to tip it now. We've got a fairly nice coloration. It could be a little bit darker. Um, let's take it out. But yeah, that's what I thought. Quite often when we bake at home, we don't quite get the colour on the... So quite often when we bake at home, we don't quite get that, the colour on the side of the bread. So if, now it's out of the tin, we're going to put it back in straight onto the stone and that should then crust them and colourise the outside of the crust on the sides. And here we have our bread, um, it's, you know, it's looking great. Um, nice golden colour on the top, um, and yeah, it's in really nice form. Let's just have a little cut and just throw it. Yeah, and that's great. And you've got a nice uh, crumb there, which is fairly dense, which is exactly what we want. It's nice and soft. Um, it's gonna be great for sandwiches, great for just a bit of butter, great for toast. Great for just everyday eating. Um, and I really, really enjoy making just a simple loaf like this and still enjoying it like it is a sourdough or something like that because the flavor that comes from it, it it's just incredible. Um, so have a go. All I would say is just keep having a go and try and get this recipe to it's a, where you're happy with it um, and then then kind of move on to the next one. Once you've had a couple of goes at this and you feel comfortable with the processes, that we've covered in this uh, lesson. Let me know if you're with any comments down below of any struggles that you're having. Um, if you want me to go over anything again or into a little bit more detail, then feel free to do that. Um, that's what it's there for, that's what the comments are for, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can.